Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pokemon 2020 Bochum Regional Championships. Myself and Boy are raring up to go into round four now of this tournament and I'm really excited to see what we've seen but I didn't get a chance to watch too much of the previous game so Jamie can you give us a little bit of a heads up as to what happened and what we saw? Yeah between two fantastic players in Marcus Tata and Alex Gomez two mm. very consistent players over multiple formats and in that game, we were just able to see why people are considering Rhyperia to be such a threat in this format. It was able to get into the trick room. It was able to activate its weakness policy thanks to the Bulldoze on the Bronze on both games and was able to just mm. dish out huge am amounts of damage. Yeah, that sounds really scary to have to deal with. And, and I suppose when you've got players as skillful as uh, both Alex and Marcus, players that have been up on the main stage, they've been right to the top stage of the World Championships, you see both people are, that are able to execute their strategies like you're describing there Jamie but also uh, you can also have the other side of the coin where people are uh, these players are really good at stopping players executing strategies and weakness policy riparia is definitely a strategy we're seeing quite commonly in this tournament yeah definitely can see why it's considered to be one of the better pokemon that was from previous generations going into this format the dynamax uh, benefiting the weakness policy activation so much with mm. that solid rock is just not taking any damage from those super effective moves and really able to dish out some huge damage. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference when you've got uh, both the solid rock that you mentioned reducing damage from super effective moves. You've got the weakness policy um, that is that allows it to do so much damage, combined with those Dynamax moves and all of the other all of the other accolades that Rhyperia has at its disposal, you can really see why it's making waves here, but not making too many waves in this matchup by the looks of things from Tobias. Yeah, we're going to be having Tobias Kajitski here, and he's going to be facing down Fevzi Oskun. So two German players, two very well-known German players here. Going to be an exciting matchup. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, these players that will know each other very well, I'm sure, played quite a lot at the local level, at the regional level, and of course, above that in, in the uh, international and national level. Um, coming up against each other, they're both 3-0 and at the moment. Unfortunately, one of them's not going to be 4-0 and at the end of this round. Yes, but we see that Inteleon there, a Pokemon that I really wanted to see going into this format. We don't mm. have access to its Gigantamax form that has been revealed through that Pokemon Direct that we saw yes. a few days ago. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, you don't need that Gigantamax form, just this Inteleon on its own with the regular access to the re only the regular Dynamax, still apparently a really huge threat as, it, as it's already 3-0 going into this tournament. Yeah, exactly. Uh, making making some waves there um, in this in this tournament. And uh, something that I, I really like about Inteleon that I was really excited to see was that new signature move that it has, uh, Snipe Shot, which allows it to ignore redirection, something that we've seen so much already so far. Um, and make sure that you're dishing out the damage in the place that you want to. Yeah, and not just the redirection in the follow me's or the rage powders, also in the storm drains that we see so commonly from mm. those Gastrodons. Gastrodon really wanting to soak up all those water moves and protect their partners from the water moves that are coming out. But Snipeshot able to just completely ignore that and makes storm drain completely useless on the Gastrodons. Yeah, exactly. But not the only new Pokemon that we're seeing here. We're also seeing that Galarian uh, Darmanitan here, which has, a, a, again, another new uh, ability coming out in that Gorilla Tactics, which raises its attack and allows and, and stops it from choosing different moves. So a little bit of a double-edged sword, but something that's going to be very potent. Yeah, equivalent to the Choice Band item that we've seen um, before as well. But the nice thing about the Gorilla Tactics is it gives you the Choice Band boost and you can also hold a choice band, giving yes. you another choice band boost yes. as well. And also uh, having access to the choice scarfs as well, if you want to uh, increase your speeds with the choice scarfs, usually the lock from the choice scarfs or the choice bands uh, could be detrimental, but Damanitan, because of its ability, it's only going to be using one move anyway. Why not get the boost from the band or the scarf? Yeah, exactly. And it's unfortunate that we don't see something like Zen Mode because I've seen that through playing through the game and it looks really cool, but... Um, we see another Galarian Darmanitan here, Fevzi's uh, team showing up on the stream. So also another Inteleon. Yeah, so very similar teams coming out from both these players. Maybe they have team built together going into this tournament. Mm. Um, two very well-known German players. It'd be no surprise if they were team building together going into this format. And 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see two Intellions face off against each other. Yeah, definitely. But also two players that are really uh, well respected in the community. And you can see from uh, Tobias's slide just a few moments ago, as well as uh, Fevzi's, no stranger to being in the top cut of these tournaments. And it doesn't seem like they've been able though so far to break into the top four, maybe into the finals. Um, but both of these players know how to get there, and that's the most important thing today. How do you get into the top cut? How do you make it to day two? And how do you have the best opportunity that you can to win the tournament? Yeah, and apparently the answer is Intellion and Galerian Damanitan. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But some differences coming out here. We've got that Duraludon that we've seen uh, a little bit of already. And Gyarados coming out, which is a Pokemon that uh, we haven't seen a great deal of so far. Yeah, so we're going to be jumping into this game between Tobias and Fevzi. So Toby is going to be running that Inteleon. And he's going to be running the Grimstar, Snorlax, Galarian Darmanitan, Wash Rotom, and Hydreigon alongside Fevzi's Inteleon. I'm so excited for two Inteleons <laughs> here. That Galarian Darmanitan also, the Grimmsnarl, the Whimsicott, Gyarados, and Duraludon. Yeah, so we've got some Pokemon in common here and uh, two Pokemon that are different on both players' sides. So each player choosing a different water type and a different dragon type, and that's going to really affect the matchup. Really, it looks like it's probably going to be in the favor of uh, Fevzi as the face of it. Depends on how these trainers have uh, trained their Pokemon and prepared for this tournament. Uh, but that... Uh, that dr uh, Excuse me, guys. Duraludon, couldn't say the word there, um, is going to be re have a really good matchup against both Washform Rotom and the Hydreigon on Tobias's side of the field. But equally, Fevzi's going to have to watch out with that Gyarados for that Washform Rotom. He's going to have to make sure that those big, strong electric attacks aren't coming out. So we'll see if they take either of those two Pokemon to game one. Um, but in the meantime, we've got some... Uh, you know, Grimmsnarl's going to be facing off against each other, maybe setting up some light screens, maybe setting up some reflect, reflex, um, or slowing down the pace of the game with Thunder Wave. Yeah, so going to be seeing a very sleepy Toby here and a very proud <laughs> Fevzi coming out for their trainer card. So put into the chat which player won the trainer card battle here as we're going to be jumping into this actual battle right now with the Grimmsnarl and Gyarados coming out for Fevzi and we're going to have a Grimmsnarl and we're going to get that Inteleon coming out for Toby. Yeah, so both players uh, leading their Grimmsnarls and making sure that they've got all of those support options in place. Grimmsnarl known for having that prankster ability giving priority to its status moves. So Reflect and Light Screen and Thunder Wave are really common options on these Pokemon to reduce either the speed of their opponents or to reduce the damage that they take uh, from their opponent's Pokemon. So, you know, we've also got the two water types coming out. We've got Gyarados and Inteleon there. And Gyarados may be able to do something like set up that Dragon Dance. We know it has access to Power Whip now. So Inteleon has got to be worried about what it's going to be facing down. But we'll see whether either of these Grimmsnarl are able to do something like Fake Out, maybe uh, delay the turn. But looks like we're having a Dynamax coming out here and Inteleon's going to go into its Dynamax form. Yeah, going to be getting a, a nice Dynamax coming out from the Inteleon. Really going to be showing what it can do in this turn one. And we're gonna, are we going to see a Dynamax coming out from Fevzi as well? Yes, we are. So probably going to be that Gyarados going to be matching the Inteleon here. Grimmsnarl usually wants to be supporting its team, so probably going to be that Gyarados here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all of the support moves that Grimmsnarl has access to turn into Max Guard when they Dynamax, so not usually what players opt for. Yeah, so we're going to have to see what these Grimmsnarls opt for in supporting the Gyarados and the Inteleon, and we're going to see Fake Out <laughs> onto the Grimmsnarl here. So the Grimmsnarl from Toby is not going to be moving thanks to that fake out. And Max Geyser is going to be fired off into that Grimmsnarl, doing a huge amount of damage wow. and almost picking up the knockout. It's going to be setting up the rain. So if that Gyarados is now going to be going for Max Geysers, it will be boosted, but it's going to be a max overgrowth instead into the Inteleon. And how much damage is this going to do? A lot of damage to that Inteleon. And thanks to that Life Orb chip, it's going to be put dangerously low here, but the grassy terrain is going to be set up, so grass, the power of grass moves will be boosted here, but that Inteleon will be recovering a bit of its HP as well as that Grim Snarl. Yeah, I think uh, it looks like both players may have forgotten the gentleman's rule of VGC that you never fake out a fake-outer, but, you know, 
Uh, these Pokemon that are able to Dynamax now, the Dynamax form does stop Fake Out from flinching at each of those Pokemon. So, hey, if you've got a Fake Out and you want to use it, you might as well give it a go on that Grimmsnarl from either player's perspective. So maybe a little bit of a trade going on there and Fevzy got on the front foot of that. Um, we saw that, that Max Overgrowth coming out from Gyarados. So really good start to the game for Fevzy, but he did have to sacrifice a lot of damage on the Grimmsnarl, so may not be able to support the team so well as Tobias going into the later turns. Well, speaking of support, here comes that Thunder Wave boosted by that Prankster, going to uh, uh, paralyze that Inteleon right now <laughs> as another Thunder Wave comes out from Toby's Grimmsnarl instead. So both water types are paralyzed here and Max Airstream is going to be the move of choice from this Inteleon, knocking out the Grimmsnarl and raising the speed of the Inteleon and the Grimmsnarl on Toby's side by one stage. So kind of negating the paralysis, needs one more Max Airstream to be countering that paralysis here. And going to have to see what the Gyarados is opting for as Inteleon's going to take a bit more life orb chip and put it in range of this Max Geyser if it would be the target from this Gyarados. But no, the Max Geyser is going to be hitting into Ooh. that Grimmsnarl and it is able to survive even with the rain boost. The Grimmsnarl is able to hang on here. Yeah, so really good turn there for Tobias. Managing to dispatch the Grimmsnarl, make sure that it's not on the field anymore. Get that Max Airstream on the field and try to start negating, as you said, uh, Jamie, that paralysis speed drop. But it looks like Whimsicott's coming out for Fevzy, so Fevzy may have the opportunity to go for a Tailwind, maybe wanting to just attack into the Grimmsnarl this turn and the Inteleon, take a quick couple of knockouts and move himself a bit more forward and try to take a Pokemon lead here. Uh, Tobias is going to have to work quite hard to avoid lots of damage. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a Tailwind coming out from this Whimsicott. It's going to be Thunder Wave going into that Whimsicott instead. And Whimsicott, naturally faster, would have moved first with its Prankster. But instead, we're going to see the Thunder Wave. And now the Max Hailstorm is going to be hitting into this Whimsicott, bringing it down to the Focus Ash. But also, crucially, it's going to be activating that Hail, mm. which will do that small bit of chip necessary to knock out this Whimsicott if the Hail stays on the field. So the Gyarados will need to go for a Max Geyser to be able to help the Whimsicott survive this turn. Whimsicott is going to be able to revenge on this Inteleon by knocking it out with the Energy Ball. So Inteleon is going to be knocked out here. And we kind of have to see if the Gyarados is going to set the sun back up for the Whimsicott. But no, it's opting for Max Quake here. Not a move we see too often coming out from Gyarados, but it's going to be knocking out that Grimmsnarl. Going to be raising the special defense of that Whimsicott and the Gyarados. But not going for that Max Geyser means that the Hail is still on the field. So the Grimmsnarl will faint here, but thanks to that little extra chip that the Whimsicott will take from this Hail, it will also be knocked out. Yeah, really, really exciting to see quite so, so early in the game, such an even game. We don't normally see uh, these, these games go straight from 4-4 uh, to... 3-3 to straight away to 2-2 two, two. and this is exactly what we've seen here as Hydrogon comes back onto the field Galarian Darmanitan joins the field for Fevzi and yet another Galarian Darmanitan comes out onto the field for Tobias so these Pokemon are going to be matching up against each other uh, there may be some uh, both of these Darmanitans are trained in the same way so that they have the same speed and that's going to be quite difficult for both of these players to navigate. They're going to have to, one, choose what they're going to um, be putting themselves, locking themselves into, but also making sure that they play the right turn so that a speed tie doesn't necessarily uh, scupper their plans. Uh, we're going to see the Galarian Darmanitan on Toby's side move first, opting for that rock slide and is able to pick up the knockout on the Darmanitan on Fevzi's side. So the Darmanitan here not going to be able to move as a Dark Pulse is going to fire off into that Gyarados and is Ooh. able to survive on 1 HP. <laughs> it is going to flinch thanks to that Dark Pulse, something the Dark Pulse can do, but <laughs> Hale is still on the field, able to pick up that last little bit of chip onto the Gyarados and Toby is able to take this game one. Yeah, so that, uh, that Hale has actually done half the work in this game, which, uh, which is really good to see. Uh, Tobias making sure that he had all of the extra Thunder Waves going on, making sure that he was as fast as he could be using that Grimmsnarl to great effect. And it looked like Fevzy just wasn't quite able to keep up with that damage output, especially that turn where the Grimmsnarl on uh, Tobias's side just lived the Max Geyser from Tobias. Yeah, crucial survival there. Able to spread one more Thunder Wave onto the Whimsicott, which didn't opt for a Tailwind that mm. turn. 
So it, it did go for the energy ball to knock out the Inteleon. So maybe if the Wimscott would have gone for that Tailwind, it would have been able to put the Gyarados into a faster position. It would also put to, uh, Fevzi's Darmanitan faster than Toby's Darmanitan. Yep. As yep. we saw that Toby's moved first and was able to pick up the knockout on the Darmanitan. If the Wimscott would have set up something like the Tailwind, then it would have been Fevzi's Darmanitan moving first and potentially picking up a knockout on Toby's instead. Yeah, exactly. And, and equally... That paralysis coming out from the Grimmsnarl, we know how the speed mechanics have changed in this generation and with the new games. So you've got this situation where if the Grimmsnarl wasn't on the field anymore, that Whimsicott would have attacked before the Inteleon that was paralyzed. So a, a real opportunity there that Tobias capitalized on really well. So absolute props to him. But it looks like we're going into team preview in game two here. Yep, so Toby is going to be running that Inteleon, Grimmsnarl, Snorlax, Darmanitan, Washrotom, Hydreigon, and Fevzi is going to be running the Inteleon, the Darmanitan, the Whimsicott, Duraludon, and Gyarados, I believe. Yes, and I think there was another Pokemon in there, but we will see yes. if, whether it comes out in this game. Yeah, they knew exactly what they were going, going for into this game too, so they didn't need any time to decide going into, into this turn one. No, exactly. And you see, see that quite commonly from some of the more experienced players. They, they know what they want to do, and they're going for it. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing exactly the same Pokemon coming up <laughs> from both players here. We're going to have a Grimmsnarl and an Inteleon versus a Grimmsnarl and Inteleon. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they match up in this, in this way. I mean, when you get two Pokemon that are potentially trained in the same way, it's hard enough. When you've got two sets of two Pokemon that are potentially trained in the same way, you've really got to be careful with how you approach the turn. And the difference here is that Fevzi now doesn't have that max overgrowth uh, ability to come out from Gyarados that we saw do a lot of work in the last game. So he's going to have to find another way to damage uh, Tobias's Inteleon. Yeah, well, speaking of Tobias's Inteleon, are we seeing that Dynamax turn one coming out from Toby again? Yes, here is the Inteleon Dynamaxing turn one once again. Yeah, so that's going to be coming out. We may see it come out from Fevzi as well, but he does want to go right on the offensive, maybe get some max airstreams going. Yeah, we are going to see a Dynamax coming out from Fevzi as well. So this might be two Inteleons Dynamaxing in the same turn. And it's going to be a really interesting turn to look at. It is going to be that Inteleon Dynamaxing for Fevzi. So going to be interesting to see how the speeds interact on both Pokemon, how yes. they train their Inteleons, yes. and also how they train their Grimmsnarls again. And are we going to see a Fake Out coming out from the Grimmsnarl from Fevzi's side again? Yes, we are. And Fake, fake Out is going into that Grimmsnarl on Toby's side and it is going to flinch, not going to be able to go for any of those Thunder Waves. And a Max Airstream is going to come out into the Grimmsnarl. The Inteleon on Fevzi's side there moving first, getting that Max Airstream and raising the speed of the Grimmsnarl and the Inteleon. And are we going to see a Max Airstream coming out from the Toby's Inteleon? Nope, it's going to be a Max Geyser instead probably going off into this Grimmsnarl and going to do a lot of damage here, picking up the one-hit knockout here. And that was a critical Ooh. hit. So I think we did see that the Grimmsnarl on Toby's side was able to take a Max Geyser from Fevzi. So if they're trained very similarly, that critical hit could have been very important there. Yeah, and you saw uh, Fevzi's reaction there. He was not happy to see that critical hit. Um, but equally, I do think that Fevzi did something really quite clever in that turn. Uh, regardless of the critical hit, he set up that max airstream knowing that Tobias may set up the rain for for himself and be able to uh, go into next turn with a full power max geyser at an increased stage of speed so be going first and really take advantage of everything that Tobias is setting up in the mirror match we see Whimsicott come in for Fevzi so uh, again a potential tailwind uh, coming out there maybe again looking at uh, taking the KO's um, on to Grimmsnarl and Inteleon on Tobias's side of the field. But it's really going to come down to what Fevzi's goal is now that he's lost that Grimmsnarl. Now that he's lost the ability to use Thunder Wave, what's he going to prioritize? Oh, he's going to prioritize his speed here with that Tailwind coming out from the Whimsicott. And thanks to it being naturally faster than the Grimmsnarl, it's going to outprankster it and activate the Tailwind <laughs> before the Thunder Wave goes into this Inteleon here which is going to fire off the Max Geyser into the Grimmsnarl and is able to pick up that little bit of extra damage to pick up the knockout on the Grimmsnarl and it's going to take a bit more life orb record and the Inteleon on Toby's side is going to be going for that Max Hailstorm into that Whimsicott. Just like we saw in game one, it is going to bring it down to its Focus Sash. It's mm. going to get rid of the range, set up the Hail again and it looks like Hail is going to be picking up yet another knockout. 
Yeah, and I love this this play. I mean, you've got these max moves that do so many different things, and how players have taken advantage of those things, I think I, I think it's brilliant. And and this is such a cute little play. A focus sash is an item that most players really have to be careful of, right? They you it stops a Pokemon that's normally quite frail, usually would go down to one hit, having to take two hits. And using Max Hailstorm in the way that Tobias is using it, he's saying, no, it doesn't matter what your item is anymore. We're going to have the KO on this Pokemon this turn. It's going to go down, and we're not going to have to waste any more resources targeting into it. So really like that play from Tobias. It looks like these players are bringing in their last Pokemon. Yeah, bringing in that Darmanitan for Fevzi, and it is in the Tailwind this time. The Whimsicott has set up the Tailwind, so the Darmanitan will be moving first for Fevzi. The Grimmsnarl has been knocked out on Toby's side, so no more Thunder Wave potentials, so the Darmanitan will be able to fire off whatever move it wants to go for here, as well as that Inteleon in the Tailwind, so quite a nice position for Fevzi, even though he's down to two Pokemon. Yeah, I think he's got a lot of the offensive pressure on pressure on the field. That Darmanitan does so much damage to all of its all of its oppon opponents with uh, just use of that uh, Gorilla Tactics ability. And Inteleon has used Max Airstream and is in Tailwind as well. So it may be that Fevzi opts to do something like Max Airstream again, make sure that he is the fastest thing on the field. Well, as Darmanitan is going to be going for that superpower into that Hydreigon and is able to easily pick up the KO on that. So Darmanitan opting to lock itself potentially into that superpower if it is running that Gorilla Tactics ability. Ooh. And we do finally see the added effect of that Paralysis, not only cutting the speed in half, but also sometimes stopping your Pokemon from moving. Yeah. And Inteleon here, not able to move, not able to potentially pick up that knockout on the opposing Inteleon on Toby's side, which is now able to fire off that Max Geyser and pick up the knockout on the Darmanitan. Yeah, Fevzi, again, he's not uh, not in the position that he wants to be in at the end of this game. So Tobias still has his last Pokemon. It is that Darmanitan coming out. We are getting to the towards the end of Tailwind here, and Inteleon's Dynamax has ended on both sides, both players' sides of the field. So really, we've got quite a commanding position here for Tobias in this end game, where Fevzi has to, is going to have to try really hard to. Uh, put, in, put on enough offensive pressure to get through Tobias's last Pokemon, but also do it while he's one of the slower Pokemon on the field. Well, we've been seeing a lot of Max Geyser coming out, but we're finally going to see what that was based <laughs> off. We're going to see the Snipe Shot come out and pick up the knockout on that Darmanitan with that critical hit and boosted in the rain is easily able to knock out the Darmanitan here. But Snipe Shot is being fired right back at the opposing Inteleon on Fevzi's side, doing a lot of damage thanks to that Life Orb recoil. And... Yeah, now we've got just a face down of Inteleons here. Yeah, I love that animation for Snipe Shot. It looks really great in this new game. Uh, we've got really a, a tough position for Fevzi here. We saw how much d uh, damage Snipe Shot did from Inteleon to Inteleon, and if they're trained in a similar way, then we might see that Fevzi is able to pick up the knockout here, as he does it with a critical hit. That is exactly what Fevzi needed after all of the things that have happened to him in this game. He's managed to get the one thing that matters. He's managed to take game two, and we are going to be moving into a game three. Yeah, so we get to see Inteleon once again going into this game three. That critical hit. We saw how much the damage uh, came onto the Inteleon from Fevzi's side from uh, Toby's snipe shot. Mm. So it looked like it would be very close if they're trained very similarly. Yes. Whether that snipe shot would pick up the knockout on the Inteleon. So the critical hit ensuring that knockout and it would have been very close otherwise. It would have been really close. And if I, if I uh, remember the turns correctly, we were in the last turn of Tailwind there. So I think it was the last opportunity for Fevzi to be able to go for something like that. Yeah, he did also set up that Max Airstream though as mm. well. So he was half speed with the paralysis, but also had the Max Airstream boost. So would have still been moving first, even without that Tailwind. Just had to break through that paralysis and do enough damage and a critical hit is definitely a, a way to do enough damage here. But yeah, yeah going to be going into game three here. Uh, do we see both Inteleons come out again from both players? I mean, it, it's so hard to uh, so hard to judge these things. What, are, what we've seen, though, is that these two players really like both being able to use their Grimmsnarl and to be able to remove their, the opponent's Grimmsnarl from the field. That seems to be a really big focus. So 
it may be in this game we see something slightly different. What I'd really like to see coming out from this game is that Duraludon coming out from Fevzi. Make that adjustment. Use something like maybe the Max Steel Spike or Flash Cannon um, from uh, Duraludon to really try to take that Grim Snarl out of the picture and do it without using your Dynamax Pokemon. Maybe leave those a little bit later on. Maybe make sure that you've got those in the back so that when, say, Toby, for argument's sake, is uh, has finished with his Dynamax, Fevzi has still got that still on the field. Yeah, we're seeing how important these speed interactions are going into this match. Because we've got the Max Airstreams boosting the speeds with the Inteleon. We've got that Tailwind on the Whimsicott to double the speed. And mm. we've got the Thunder Waves coming out from potentially both Grim Snarls. I think we've uh, uh, no, we've seen, th yeah, Thunder Waves coming out from both yes, Grim Snarls from both. Here. From so both. players do need to prioritize getting rid of that Grim Snarl, taking that Thunder Wave off the field from, uh, from their opposing players so yes. that they can be in the speed that they want. So we're going to be seeing Grim Snarl and Teleon once again from both players. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one adjustment from game two, and that's uh, Tobias decided to put his Inteleon and Grimmsnarl in different slots. So, yeah, not sure that's going to make any competitive difference, but it's nice to see them mixing something up at least. Yes, for sure. And maybe Dynamaxing turn one again from both these Inteleons. We've seen that Fevzi likes to fake out the opposing Grimmsnarl just mm. to stop those Thunder Waves coming yes. out. We haven't seen any fake outs coming out from the um, Grimmsnarl on Toby's side. Maybe the Grimmsnarl on Fevzi's side is just slightly faster and getting those fake outs off, but we don't know here. But what we do know is we're going to be seeing another Dynamax here, almost certainly going to be that Inteleon once again. Yeah, it looks like Inteleon's coming out from Tobias, and likely that we see that coming out from Fevzi as well. So we're going to probably be seeing a little bit of a mirror of the first game. We'll see if the fake out comes out, and there it is. There's the next Dynamax. So again, we're going for those explosive turns, getting that damage onto the field, probably making sure those Grimmsnarl aren't there causing the mischief that they want to. Yeah, so we're going to have to see if that mischief is going to be fake out onto the opposing Grimmsnarl <laughs> once again, or yes. if they're just going to opt for some Thunder Waves instead, or whatever sub other support moves the Grimmsnarls want to go for. But three for three fake outs <laughs> onto the opposing Grimmsnarl from Fevzi here. And the Inteleon on Toby's side is going to be moving first this time, firing off that Max Geyser into the Grimmsnarl, not picking up a critical hit this time, so the Grimmsnarl is able to survive this turn because the Grimmsnarl is going to be flinching for Toby here and has fired off and survived for the Max Geyser from the Inteleon, but the Max Geyser from the Inteleon on Fedzi's side is going to be picking up the knockout on that Grimmsnarl here thanks to that rain boost that was set from the opposing Inteleon. Yeah, exactly. So you've got this situation here where it looks like uh, both of these Inteleons are trained in exactly the same way. If they are, it's going to be the, uh, a, a bit of a coin flip as to which Inteleon goes first if they're both going for Max Geyser, one of them is going to set up the rain for the other one to be boosted. So it's a real difficult situation to be in. And you saw Toby, Tobias there shaking his head as he went first for a change. Uh, normally players want to be going first, but in this case, you want to be going second. And that's exactly what happened for Fevzi here, managing to take the knockout on Tobias's uh, Grimmsnarl. Yeah, so the Grimmsnarl on Fevzi's side is going to still be around to spread that Thunder Wave onto that Inteleon. So Rotom here is going to be an adjustment coming out from Toby. So mm. going, going to be putting a lot, a lot of pressure onto the opposing Inteleon from Fevzi's side. So um, quite a nice adjustment coming out here from Toby. And it's going to be resist, resisting those Thunder Waves as well, not being able to be affected thanks to its electric typing here. So maybe seeing a Thunder Wave going into the Rotom as well mm. but um, to paralyze uh, Thunder Wave into the Inteleon to... Uh, paralyze it instead, but instead we're going to be seeing a fake tears coming out. Yeah, lowering the special defense of Inteleon and Tobias' side of the field as it replies back with a max airstream going to be boosting the speed of both Inteleon and Rotom Wash on Tobias' side of the field. Uh, Fevzi looks like he's targeting into that Inteleon though. Yeah, so Max Geyser is going to be coming out from Fevzi's Inteleon here into the opposing Inteleon and thanks to that fake tears is able to pick up the knockout even though the Inteleon was Dynamaxed here. So really nice move coming out from the Grim Snarl. We had seen that fake out, we had seen the Thunder Wave and he'd kept that fake tears in the back. Big surprise coming out onto the Inteleon to mm. be able to pick up the knockout. But also, the, speaking of Inteleon being knocked out, here comes a Thunderbolt into the Inteleon to knock it out as well. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's a really nice adjustment from Tobias. I mean, 
we were talking about how they didn't adjust at turn one. Uh, it looks like it was more than just a position change for Tobias coming out here and bringing that Rotom wash. And I really like the adjustment. And it's, it, you know, we, it, it's really difficult when you've got two Pokemon of the same type that want to be facing off against each other, especially when both of them are Dynamax. You have to ask yourself, how are you going to do enough damage for an, to the opposing Pokemon? And as it turns out, Tobias decided that that way is to bring an electric Pokemon that was super effective against uh, in Inteleon. Yeah, so we've lost the Inteleons on both sides really early now. We saw how crucial it, the Inteleon on Toby's side was in game mm. one. It was able to just fire off so many powerful moves and be really influential in their game one. We saw them face off in game two and come down just to Inteleon versus Inteleon, but now yeah. both have been knocked out very early. They have, and we've got some different interactions on the field here. Whimsicott coming out for Fevzi and Hydreigon coming out from Tobias, and that's going to be really difficult for Tobias to be able to deal with. Uh, Whimsicott has the option to Tailwind, but Fevzi also has the option to Thunder Wave for speed control, so not locked into using Tailwind this turn. Yeah, another fake tears, though, coming out from this Grimmsnarl into the Rotom, and the Rotom is going to be moving first here before the Whimsicott, firing off a Hydro Pump into the Whimsicott, doing a nice bit of damage, bringing it just under half, and a Dazzling Gleam coming Ooh. out from the Whimsicott, not opting for that Moonblast that we so often see on Whimsicott, but able to hit both Pokemon here, able to knock out that Hydreigon thanks to it being four times weak to that Dazzling Gleam, and as well as the Fake Tears on the Rotom, going to be doing a nice bit of damage to that Rotom, activating its Ictus Berry. Yeah, exactly. And now Tobias is down to his last Pokemon. Uh, the Rotom has taken that special defense drop from the Fake Tears, and it's facing down a Whimsicott with a Grass-type move uh, that it really does not want to be doing. So we're going to see the Whimsicott go for that last Tailwind here. Let's see what the Grimmsnarl does. Yeah, doubling the speed of the Grimmsnarl as well, letting it go for this foul play into the Rotom. Rotom, though, not known to be the most physically offensive Pokemon, going to be shrugging off that foul play quite easily as it's going to fire off that Hydro Pump and Ooh. boosted by the rain is able to knock out this Whimsicott. So quite risky going for those Hydro Pumps, but thanks to the rain boost, able to knock out this Grimmsnarl here. Yeah, and, and when you are when you need to use those moves, you've got to use them. Are we ha I think we have one more turn of Tailwind left. Yeah, he's just set up the Tailwind so that the Grimmsnarl oh, can move. Oh, they're both the and same, also yes. so that the Demanitan can now move first and yes. probably go for the a move that's 100% accurate like this Super Power and able to pick up the knockout on this Rotom and take the set for Fevzi. Yeah, really good, uh, really good end to the game there. And I really like seeing those uh, the, the third games where these players do do something slightly different and for some players it works for some players it doesn't uh, normally we'd be seeing a player looking very happy at the moment uh, unfortunately Fevzi has gone off and had a look uh, started having a chat to Tobias they're probably talking about the game and having a, a nice little laugh and a joke about yeah, it and also hugging as well showing some good sportsmanship yeah I'm um, showing how they're, they're good friends as well and even though one of them had to lose, they're still showing some good sportsmanship here. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the great thing about playing Pokemon is that you get such a great community. All of these players, they're all rivals when they get into the game. You know, you start that game, you start whatever round you're against the opponent. You want to win. You're, it doesn't matter if you're friends or not. But after the game, hey, it doesn't matter what happens, happens. And these players are just, you know, really close and don't ever lose that friendship for the competition. Yeah, it's really nice to see. And it was really nice to see two Inteleons coming out here, being really influential in mm. all of the games. Yes. Like Inteleon was a key member for both players, and it was really nice to see. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I really enjoyed seeing that uh, Darmanitan come out and actually be useful. Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of the games that I've seen as we've been running up to this tournament, the either the Galarian Darm Darmanitan knocks out everything because it's so strong and it just it, it wasn't able to be um, checked properly or because it's not known for having a lot of defensive stats it just gets knocked out straight away maybe gets one attack off but in this game it actually on both sides of the field managed to do quite a lot of work and just finish off each game yeah, we saw the rock slide coming out from Toby's uh, mm. Galarian Domanitan into the opposing Domanitan. Maybe some awkward speed ties between the two Domanitans. 
whether they were holding a choice scarf or whether we were holding a choice band. I don't think we ever actually were able to see which choice item the yes. Demanitan would be holding yeah. because we had the Whimsicott going for those tailwinds and raising the speeds of the, the Demanitans before. But yeah, C crucial coming in right at the end with their Demanitan, saving it till the end, mm. using their Teleons to set up the ball positions they want and bringing in the Demanitans to do that last little bit of damage. Yeah, and that's a, that's a really good way to approach the game if you've got these really powerful maybe more volatile pokemon sometimes they're best used right at the start of the game to maybe punch a hole in somebody's team but they can also be used to clean up a game and finish it off and that's exactly what we saw both players try to do here and it's a great use of uh, great use of their resources yeah it was a really nice showing from both players so going to be cutting to a short break and when we come back we'll be having an interview with Fevzi. so stay tuned
Hello everyone and welcome back. We are joined by the winner of that previous game here, Fevzi. How are you feeling both playing against your friend, going to free sets and also having such close games? How, how do you feel after the match? Uh, it's just a crazy feeling. I didn't think I would come back after the crit I got in uh, turn one of game two. Mm -hmm. But then, as you see, the last crit I needed from Italian with snipe shot, I got it and... It changed everything. Yeah, that was so hype. We, you know, there was one opportunity there for you to get that critical hit and you yeah, got it. Yeah, and yeah. it brought us to a game three, exactly. which is exactly what you want when you've got two players that are so well accomplished playing up against each other. But speaking about your teams, how did you feel going up against another Inteleon? So actually we built this team together mm, and we okay. talked about it and it was inspired by Japan. Mm -hmm. And we were like, okay, what are things we could fix? And he actually liked the team and he was like, okay, I'm just doing some few changes. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take this concept and build my own team from it. Right. So you both used the same uh, starting point, but yes, went in exactly, slightly different exactly. directions. Yeah, we just uh, figured out how good actually Intellion is mm. and that nobody p is playing it. And we were sure like many people would uh, get called off guard. And it actually worked for, worked for both of us. He started 3-0, I started 3-0, uh, yeah. and until we faced each other. So well, that's, that's the thing. I suppose if you were both trying to use a Pokemon that many other players weren't going to be using, yeah. actually to face up against each yeah. other must have been yeah. pretty difficult to see. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of other things going on in that match. You had a lot of speed control going exactly, on there. Exactly. You had the paralysis, you had the tailwind, you had yeah. Max Airstream going on. So exactly. what was your thought process going through the game about keeping on top of everything? So I tried to um, act win the speed ties with our mounts. <laughs> like it was, that was important, actually. Yeah, well, um, when you've got to win the speed tie, yeah, you've got yeah, to win yeah, the speed exactly. tie. Like I lost game one because I lost the speed ties. Mm. And... Then game two, okay, he crit me, yep. and I needed the crit to come back, but I knew Whimsicott in the, uh, in the back is crucial mm -hmm. for this game. And he was smart enough to target it down in game one and two with, uh, with uh, Max Hailstorm. The Max Hailstorm, which, yeah. Which, like, he breaks my sash, and with the hail, <laughs> he yeah. also, like, knocks it out right away. And I can't set Tailwind. Yeah. And in game three, I figured, okay, I have to, like, if I play, like, w game one and two, I'm probably not going to win it like mm -hmm. I did it in game two with the crit. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to target down the Grimmsnarl to take his uh, speed control yep. away because that's his, and he's, uh, he has max airstream, obviously. And yes. I got my Whimsicott in the back. So I was like, okay, if I can keep my Intellion healthy and bring in my Whimsicott in a good position, mm -hmm. I can win it with a Tailwind go. And that's exactly yeah. what you did yeah, in that exactly. game three, really masterfully done. But another yeah. Pokemon that we saw was that Darmanitan yeah. and both both of you used that really well. We've seen quite a lot of people try to uh, use it quite early on in the form, mm -hmm. in the game and mm -hmm. really try to uh, punch a hole through mm -hmm. the opposing Pokemon. But you guys both used it differently. You used it as an end game, uh, end game clearer. So yes. what led you towards that? Uh, so with Dermanitan, we were both thinking that like the damage output is so insane mm. with the, with the ability, like it gives you a free choice, but basically yes. And we were both like, okay, um, with speed control going on, we can just put out the best, uh, like the the most of it. Mm. And he brought it because his Darmanitan was actually always in a good position to come in when I was not um, having a whimsical on the field. Yes, uh, because. Uh, yeah, I don't want to reveal too much about my yeah, team. Because no, if, that's I, if okay. I answer this, then yeah, uh, yeah it will uh, it will give me. A we can we can leave yeah, it. So, at so yeah, it, exactly. it does lots of damage. Yeah, exactly. and it's yeah, really that, powerful. That's all we need to it know. needs to be in a good spot exactly. to do that. So exactly. yeah, well, both of you really showed how to do that really well, and mm -hmm. I hope players at home uh, really take note of how how to use that Pokemon going exactly. forward. Exactly. Um, but going on to. Uh, Back to sort of competitive play, mm -hmm. I suppose. You have been uh, competing for quite a number of years now, yes. going to lots of tournaments. Mm -hmm. What's your best experience playing at these tournaments? 
uh, my best experience has to be uh, going to Worlds. Yeah. This, uh, like last year. Because I was playing since uh, 2016. Yeah. And I hadn't the chance to go to Worlds actually. And last year I was fortunate enough to get a day two invite. Amazing. And like it was just a dream coming true. Like seeing every friend you met online in the community, being in one uh, point. Yeah. And like the entrance music, everything, it just gave me goosebumps. So it's, um, it's, it's an experience that everyone has to, uh, everyone has to experience. Uh, that so opening yeah. ceremony is yeah, yeah. so good, isn't it? Exactly, Where they exactly. both release new Pokemon, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you it's see so many new things and you've got this huge crowd of people exactly, around you exactly, that are exactly, all looking exactly, at the same thing exactly, and they're all exactly, so excited. Exactly. So yeah, totally agree with you. Absolutely phenomenal experience and uh, I really encourage everyone to come to these tournaments, see exactly. if you can get to the Worlds exactly, because exactly. for the first time ever, it's in Europe this year. So exactly, so exactly. exciting, so exciting. Well, look, we're going to go to another short break. We'll be back soon with round five. Thank you again, Fevzi, Thank and we will see you very soon. Stay tuned.